ja, ja se suihku tuli aivan tänne hänen peräpeilinsä. Kyllä se oli omalle, kun nähtiin, That was some että feeling when we saw a flash in the, flash in the tank and it, and it caught fire, so spontaneously we yelled, hey, you want to come again and have another try, huh? The scarce Finnish fighter planes carried out a ruthless campaign against an enemy superior in number. On some days, the Soviet Air Force lost more than 40 planes shot down by Finnish fighter planes and ground-based air defense. In spite of this, the Soviet attack planes were a constant hazard and menace in the skies of Ihantala. Yeah, those uh, IL-2s, as we called them, were very well armored, but uh, only in the pilot and machine gunner parts. It was like a bathtub where they sat. The rest of the plane was uh, flywood in the wings and so on. The hit had to be good, especially the, the Messerschmitt 20 millimeter gun was, was very good. When I for the first time got to shoot at one of those IL-2s in, in the wing base, where it evidently had its gas tank because uh, it blew up at once. During the grand battle, the Finnish bombers carried out nearly a hundred sorties each day. Russian artillery positions, troop and tank formations, and logistic routes were the primary targets. They emphasized to us, after the big offensive had started, that we were to protect the bomber planes and that they must get to target without damage. We succeeded in this, so that the enemy couldn't shoot down a single Finnish bomber when they were protected by the Messerschmitt. The truth is that not one single plane of the bomber regiment was shot down by fighters, that is, in the Tali-Ihantala area. The German Air Force detachment led by Lieutenant Colonel Kulme arrived from Estonia to support the Finnish battle. The detachment consisted of Fokker Wolf fighter bombers and the famous Stuka dive bombers. The German planes had the same target as the Finns, but the Stukas performed especially well in destroying the bridges of Tully. Those bridges were crucial for Russian troop deployment and logistics. The most typical targets in uh, the Tali Ihantala were the artillery positions. I remember especially around the 25th of June, there was a lot of enemy artillery in the Hauru Six Roads crossing. That was one of our most important targets in the Tali area. The Russian offensive towards the north was first directed across the Tali bridges and we tried to keep those bridges inoperable, but the Russians kept, kept rebuilding them. Both the bomber regiment 4 and the flight detachment Kulme kept attacking these bridges. Now, I would estimate that probably the Kulme boys kept the bridges inoperable more than we did. These Stukas flew nicely past and uh, we counted them to be nine altogether. Then, after a while, seven came back. Now, those dive bombers were a real sight. I mean, it was those dive bombers that you went to see. And the dive they did, it was absolutely unbelievable. But I am glad to say that on the on that Ihantala uh, Ammavuori, where the visibility is good, we did also, also see a lot of our own planes. A one-minute strike from six artillery battalions, that's altogether 40 guns, was the equivalent of 15 Stuka attacks. On land, the Germans took part in the Ihantala battle with a force of almost an assault gun brigade. On the road, there was this tank driving. And I thought for sure it was one of ours, so I didn't, didn't even try to take cover. 
Then, to my shock, I saw how a German assault gun on the side of the road fired at the tank, and it caught fire. I didn't notice that there was a Finnish anti-tank gun behind my back. So there I stood, between this gun and the burning tank. Also, there was an info company photographer there. He asked me to step aside and uh, then he started to film the gun that now pretended to fire uh, at the burning tank in the background. I was now standing behind the photographer. Now, this burning tank episode was filmed a lot, but this is the first session. All the Germans did was shoot down this one tank, and they hardly fired at other tanks during the actual Ihantala Churchill battle. But this Swedish-speaking battalion did their job very well. Furthermore, there were some 30 to 40 Swedish and Danish volunteers in the battalion, who had been there already since the beginning of the continuation war. Now, these Infantry Regiment 13 men covered themselves from the rain with large pieces of white cardboard. Well, then, using these enormous pieces of cardboard, I mean, they made really easy targets for the enemy tanks. So then, Luxin said, once rather crossly, those damn Swedes getting themselves all killed, all of them, they're more afraid of a little rain than the Russians. The troops of the 11th Division were firmly in battle on June the 29th. Thus, they could not be moved into the new main line of defense. The 6th Division, led by Major General Wichmar, had to take charge also in the sector previously planned for the 11th Division. The 6th Division was strengthened. The 18th and the Armored Division were moved into reserve. The threat of the enemy surrounding the Finnish troops was thwarted by Colonel Kuiri's Jaeger Regiment 25 which held its positions on the east side of Lake Ihantalajärvi. Well, Colonel Kueri told me to take command of the company in Tallinn. If the Russians break through, I'll come and shoot you down. Any questions? Well, no questions there. But you have to remember that on the 20th of June, Mannerheim gave an order saying that these positions must be kept they will not be given to the enemy, never. Well, in practice, this meant we had to fight and die there. The battlefield equation remained heavily favorable to the Russians, but they had become less overwhelming because of new Finnish troops and material and Russian casualties. This enemy fire concentration was just so enormous. I couldn't even imagine anything like it. There were bombs fell from planes, shells from cannons, and what else have you. And the situation was such that we couldn't distinguish when the guns were fired from the explosions of the shells. It was just one continuous thunder. Well, as time passed, you, you got used to not paying much attention to enemy three-inch grenade. But a six-inch bang would still get a bit of respect. I mean, when ja these go off around you, the air is just full of dirt. In these cases, you, you tend to listen to see if there's one ja more coming. And somehow even the bangs of guns being fired felt so bad, they kind of held their breath on their way in. Ah, that sound was something, something so awful, because you knew that in 10 or 20 seconds there would be new explosions and more shells coming. The Russian artillery delivered extremely heavy blows. I, for one, learned to respect the firepower of the Russian artillery. 
We lost our battery commander there, then the XO, who was replaced by someone who also died. He, in turn, was replaced by a section officer who also died.